So good day everyone, I am Isla Maria Eleanor Yes, and our assigned topic is to discuss forest and landscape restoration based on core principles. So what is forest lands landscape restoration or FLR? So forest landscape restoration is the ongoing process of regaining ecological functionality and enhancing human well-being across deforested or degraded forest landscape. FLR is more than just planting trees. It is restoring a whole landscape to meet present and future needs and to offer multiple benefits and land uses over time. And it manifests through different processes such as new tree plantings, managed natural regeneration, agroforestry or improved land management to accommodate a mosaic of land uses including agriculture, protected wildlife reserves, managed plantations and riverside plantings and more. And also it is about forest because it involves increasing the number and or health of trees in an area, landscapes and it involves entire watersheds, jurisdictions or even countries in which many land uses interact and also restoration because it involves bringing back the biological productivity of an area in order to achieve any number of benefits for people and the planet. And it is long term because it requires a multi-year vision of the ecological functions and benefits to human well-being that restoration will produce, although tangible deliverables such as jobs, income, and carbon sequestration begin to flow right away. And while FLR sometimes involves the opportunity to restore large contiguous tracts of degraded or fragmented forest land, the majority of restoration opportunities are found on or adjacent to agricultural or pastoral land. In these situations, restoration must complement and not to displace existing land uses. This results in patchwork or mosaic of different land, including agriculture, agroforestry systems, and improved fallow systems, ecological corridors, areas of forest and woodlands, and river or lakeside plantings to protect waterways. And successful forest land restoration is forward-looking and dynamic, focusing on strengthening the resilience of landscapes and creating future options to adjust and further optimize ecosystem goods and services as societal needs change or new challenges arise. It integrates a number of guiding principles, including, so the next reporter will give a discussion about the principles of forest land restoration. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Ayrami Polina from BSF2A. Today, I will discuss the principle of forest and landscape restoration. Today, I will discuss to you my topic which is all about focus on landscape. Focus on landscape is restores entire landscapes, not individual sites. Restoration typically entails balancing across the landscape a mosaic of interdependent land uses such as protective forest areas, ecological corridors, regenerating forests, other natural ecosystems, agroforestry systems, agriculture, improved fallow systems, well-managed plantations, and riparian strips to meet a variety of human needs. Focus on landscape, a successful restoration generates a wide range of benefits, not only forest quantity and quality, but enhance food security, improve air and water quality, climate change resilience, job creation, and also more. Next is Restore Ecological Functionality. It restores the ecological functionality of the landscape, such as its richness as a habitat its ability to contain erosion and floods, and its resilience to climate change and various disturbances. This can be done in many ways, one of which is to restore the landscape toward the pre-human disturbance or original vegetation, but other strategy may also be used. Uh, ecological restoration aims to recreate Initiate and accelerate the recovery of an ecosystem that has been disturbed or disturbances are environmental changes that alter ecosystem structure and function. And also, restoration and ecology is the 
scientific study of repairing disturbed ecosystem through human intervention. Hello everyone, I am Jody Vicato. So today my assigned topic is about Global Restoration Initiative. So first, it allows for multiple benefits. Oh, so what are these benefits? Firstly is, it generates a suit of ecosystem, goods, and services by intelligently and appropriately increase, increasing tree cover across the landscape. Onion. For some places, trees are added to agricultural land without forming a forest canopy in order to enhance food production, reduce erosion, provide shade, and reduce firewood. So in some places, or in other places, the trees are added to create a close canopy forest, which is capable of sequestering large amounts of carbon, protecting downstream water, water supplies, and providing rich wildlife habitat. Second, it recognizes that a suit of interventions are possible. So, it embraces a wide range of strategies for restoring trees in the landscape. landscape. For instance, there are some strategies that make a way for nature to take its course. Example for that is curtailing livestock, grazing to allow trees to spontaneously regrow, and the, while the others are involved very active human intervention. Example, example of that is tree growing. everyone, I am Rosalie C. Sala and now I will discuss about involved stakeholders. In actively engaged local stakeholders, including landowners, land managers, communities, civil society, governments, and the private sector in decisions regarding restoration goals, implementation methods, and trade-offs. It is important that restoration process respect local stakeholders' rights aligns with their land management needs and provides them with benefits. Stakeholders include any people or organization that can directly or indirectly affect or be affected by an, by an FLR or Forest Landscape Restoration initi Initiative. A stakeholders in a process are, in, are individuals, groups, or other organization who are, the, who are directly involved those who provide the inputs and those who are affected or can affect the outcomes of the process either negatively or positively. Stakeholders include any people or organization that can directly or indirectly affect or be affected by an FLR initiative. Four broad stakeholders groups are, are the local communities, government, private sector parties, civil society organization, and academia. The following section summarizes the roles and interests of each stakeholders group, as well as the potential benefit, benefits FLR can provide them. First is the local communities. These are people living or near the landscape. They can, they can be differentiated by source of livelihood such as wage, wage earners, forest clover, gavelers, farmers, and trades by trades or by ethnicity, wealth, and power. The landscape is a part of their culture and identity. Local people, especially marginalized groups, are strongly affected by decisions made about their landscape. Communities have important knowledge about forest management that is valuable, valuable for designing, implementing, monitoring, and evaluating FLR initiative. For this reason, local communities can be should play a, a, a should play a pivotal pivotal role in ensuring the effectiveness and sustainability of the of any FLR efforts.
the potential benefits of FLR, FL, FLR to local communities include first, increased access to product, products and services in the landscape, contributing to improve livelihoods and social security in the long term. Next, more economic opportunities through restoration-related jobs and activities, and through trade and values addition of forest products and services. Next, improve grassroots institution and multi-stakeholder platforms as a precondition or byproduct of FLR processes, which contributes to addressing in inequality gaps in gender resource access and benefits participation and rep and representation last enhance overall res resilience and adaptive 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 capacity especially for mar marginalized groups next is the government government stakeholders include ministries and agencies that manage forest land water resources and related livelihood issues in the landscape government stakeholders develop and implement laws and policies depending in the role in the roles locations and administrative levels their decision will affect the landscape to different degrees however they often have the strongest impact or their impact on their landscape and on other the their interest, the interest of government is it can include other sectors such as agriculture, mining, and infrastructure. They can be based within the landscape or outside it. Potential benefit of FLR for government stakeholders include first, increase and progress toward progress towards national and subnational targets on restoration, biodiversity, conservation, and poverty reduction. Second, boosted local economic development and livelihoods through improved value chains, taxes, and revenues. Third, reduces gender and social inequalities. Fourth, improves stakeholder understanding of and compliance with relevant laws and policies. Se next, increased policy impacts, sustain impacts uh, on long-term ecological sustainability and economic efficiency. 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 Next, reduced conflict conflict over natural natural resources, especially land and forest. And last harmonized indigenous and local knowledge with science and technology. Private sector. Private sector can be based with, within the landscape or outside it. It must operate in the landscape for profit, engaging in, 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 in supply chains of forestry related products and services or in other se sectors such as, uh, such as as agriculture, mining, and energy. There are also a private sector that invest in the landscape for social benefit, such, such as social credits, networks, visibility, and branding. Private, private business play a, a pivotal role in improving supply chains and adding value to product and services. They create jobs and income for local people. Private sectors actor can also be significant source of FLR financing. However, their activities can create conflicts with or among local communities, most commonly because of unfair benefit sharing and the lack of knowledge about cost about custom customary tenure right the potential benefit of FLR for FLR for the private sector include expanded business and partnership opportunities from enhanced supplies of products and services from the landscape more opportunities to engage with and be 
understood by other landscape stakeholders, resulting in a more business-friendly environment in the landscape. Last, strengthen and social credential thanks to sustain, sustain, sustainab sustainability and social activities that they engage with during FLR process. Civil society organization and academia. These stakeholders can, can include non-profit and non-government organization, community-based organization, and research and education institute. Their interests vary from human rights to animal rights, from, in, from environmental sustainability to, to social economic development. They play a supporting role of in helping communities and local government to achieve FLR goals. Their work ranges from data research to financing and implementing FLR activities. The potential benefits of FLR, FLR are for these stakeholders include opportunities to introduce their perspective and to influence local stakeholders through platforms created through FLR processes. Last, improve access to local knowledge and resources. Tailor of local context. FLR use, use a variety of approaches that are adapted to the local, social, cultural, economic, and ecological values, needs, and landscape history. It draws on latest science and best practice and, and traditional and, and indigenous knowledge and apply that information in the context of local capacities and existing or new governance structure. Every community, landscape, and ecosystem is ecosystem different, and FLR interventions need to take this into account of their two. Good morning, everyone. This is my report. Manage adaptively. As environmental circumstances, human understanding and society value change. It changes its restoration techniques. It takes advantage of close monitoring and learning in order to make adjustments as the restoration advances. Decision makers might benefit from solutions that help them deal with the inherent uncertainty around climate change it affects and the best ways to respond so the management adaptively it is the adjustments of restoration strategies over time as environmental conditions like human knowledge and societal value changes it liberates also the and continuous monitoring and learning to make adjustments as the restoration process progresses. Avoid conversions of natural ecosystem. It should not advocate for more forest vegetation than is ecologically acceptable for a given location and it should not result in the loss or conversion of native forests, grasslands, or other ecosystems. Soil and agriculture are part of this equation. We tend to think of soil as dirt, but it is a living system with the capability to support productivity. productivity. The word population is growing quickly, but with improved agricultural productivity, we can avoid converting any more natural ecosystem to produce enough food. So avoid conversion of natural ecosystem. It does not call for increasing tree lover beyond that. What would be ecologically appropriate for a particular location and should not cause any loss or conversion of natural forests, grasslands, or other ecosystems. So that's all. Thank you for listening and God bless. Good day everyone, this is Kimberly A. Maestrado and I am going to tackle about the importance and benefits of forest landscape restoration. 
So FLR or the Forest Landscape Restoration is the ongoing process of regaining ecological functionality and enhancing human well-being across deforested or degraded forest landscapes. So why is forest landscape restoration important? So according to FAO's Global Forest Resources Assessments, Southeast Asia lost more than 30 million hectares of forests between 1990 and 2015. This was more than 11% of its total forest area. The loss had significant socio-economic and environmental impacts, particularly on poor and rural communities. Forest loss and degradation exacerbate local and global problems related to food and livelihoods, clean water, fresh air, and the climate. Degraded landscapes are also more vulnerable to natural disasters and extreme weather conditions such as heavy rainfall, floods, and landslides. So FLR or the Forest Landscape Restoration is more than just planting trees. It is also restoring a whole landscape to meet present and future needs and to offer multiple benefits and land uses over time. FLR has great potential to address these issues by enhancing landscapes in ways that ensure lasting benefits. Benefits include better local climate regulation, improved flood and erosion control, and increased variety and availability of food and non-food products, and economic opportunities for local people. FLR can support climate change mitigation and adaptation while enhancing ecological and livelihood values for the landscape and its people. In time, this can translate into improved quality of life and increased resilience of people who depend on forests. So, FLR manifests through different processes such as new tree plantings, manage natural regeneration, agroforestry, or improve land management to accommodate a mosaic of land uses, including agriculture, protected wildlife reserves, management plantations, riverside plantings, and more. So, there are benefits of forest landscape restoration. So, the first is environmental protection. So, ang FLR, it enhances forest protection and restoration, soil con conservation, water source protection, air quality, local climate, and biodiversity conservation. Next is sustainable livelihoods. FLR increases supplies of landscape products such as food, water, timber, and biomedicines. So therefore, FLR offers communities that depend on forest opportunities for income generation and sustainable livelihoods. So FLR also benefit to climate resilience and disaster risk redu reduction. FLR can support climate change mitigation and adaptation while enhancing ecological and livelihood values for the landscape and its people. So the improvement of forest and other resources through FLR processes can also reduce disaster risks such as floods, droughts, landslides, or outbreaks of pests. Also, it benefits to transparency and accountability. So, FLR provides opportunities to improve or create new institutional structures for stakeholder engagement. It boosts stakeholder consultations, participation, and ownership, and this can bring greater transparency and accountability to decision-making processes on continuous issues such as land tenure, land use management, and water access. And social inclusion. 
FLR promotes meaningful participation in decision-making by disadvantages groups whose voices and opinions are often ignored. This includes poor and landless people, women, youth, and ethnic minorities and indigenous groups. These groups may become empowered and more widely acknowledged by the stakeholders as a result of participatory processes, capacity building, and improved economic and social returns from their sustainable practices. And cross-sectorial integration, FLR promotes stronger collaboration among landscape stakeholders and brings sectors together to negotiate solutions at the landscape level. And lastly, sustainable development. So FLR can contribute to the achievement of the UN Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs, particularly towards SDG 1, 2, 5, 6, 13, and 15. So, providing people with sustainable access to the natural resources they depend and allows us to create a strategy for repairing a natural forest processes. So, the landscape then can support people that need um, lands while taking the pressure of forests that can most benefit from restoration. So FLR is very important to people that needs landscapes. That would be all. Thank you.